Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, I just wanted to get a little bit more practice with static methods by creating another method for the users. But this time, instead of taking one user to print a user, we're going to take a list of users. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So throughout these videos, we've basically made a bunch of variations of methods to print users, but I'm really trying to give you guys the concepts behind that. So understanding static methods, versus instance methods and just the various ways of doing things. So don't worry too much about the fact that we have like a million different ways to print users. That's not the point. <laughs> so let's create another method um, and let's first talk about how we're going to invoke it. So I want it to look like this user dot print users. Now, when you hover over this, you can say you can see it says user does not contain a definition for print users. So you can click show potential fixes, fix it, blah, 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 generate method user dot print users. Now over in our class, we're going to have this here and it has this internal keyword. This is another access modifier. Uh, we haven't talked about it. If you want to know more about it, research it, but I'm going to use public instead. Internal is just a little bit more restrictive, maybe a little safer, but you know, as we're learning, I just like to keep it public. Now, before we go in here and tinker with that, what I want to do, is I want to create a list. And this is actually going to take a list, so we'll pass it in like so. And the list is gonna look like so. Great. Now, if you already pass this in, when you generated that method stub, it'll put that as the parameter. So I'll show you guys that. Let me get rid of that. Now that we have this passed in, we can hover over this, show potential fixes, and generate that method. And you can see it gives us that correct type in the parameter. So however you guys want to do it, you could even go type it out yourself manually if you want. Uh, but that requires typing and we don't want to, we want to do the least amount of typing as possible. So I want to add some users to this list. So first one, we have this one here. So we can just say users.add, pass in user. And I'm going to create another user, user2. And we'll give user2 a first name. and we'll add him to the list as well. Beautiful. All right, so now when we print users, we can go into the method and see what happens. We're basically going to iterate through the list for each user in users. Then we can reference each user using this variable here. Each iteration, it'll change which user it's talking about. And all we have to do is say user.output. And that'll call the output method on that user. Taking a look at that method, it's right here. It's just gonna print their full name a certain number of times, which means we wanna put at least a one here. Earlier, I did a zero here. That should be a one as well. All right, let's give it a go. Let's just take a, a good look at our code here. We're passing in that whole list. And in theory, it should print both of their usernames or their first names and last names, I mean. Uh, okay, one issue. So taking a look back at our code and taking a look at this output method, you can see that it returns a string. So it's actually returning the message. So we need to actually put this inside of a console.write line. And I'm going to do that down here as well. There we go. All right, so we got that console.write line here. Let's run this and make sure it works. All right, and you can see we get some outputs, which is great. This first one here, that's actually a call to this method, print user, which I think comes first. So we have print user here. If you wanted to comment that out, you can. And then we could just focus on print users, which would give us Caleb Curry and chocolate. Now you can see what's going on here. I'm basically using the user class as a collection for various utility functions built around users. So right now we have a print user, we have a print users. Later we could have save users or whatever we wanted it to be. 
So that is the purpose of static methods and hopefully you guys have a pretty good experience with it. Check out the next video please. We're going to be talking about method overloading as well as optional parameters and there's lots of cool stuff coming up so stay tuned. See you then.